you live? Very good. You live. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, we'll call the meeting to order, 7 o'clock. Uh, three trustees. Archie. Road person. Uh, mine is a fist block, so this evening. So we'll struggle through it without her. I entertain a motion. Uh, we have two sets of meetings, to, uh, minute, minute meetings this evening. One uh, is up August 6th. And except for a little spelling problem she had. So I move the adoption of the August 6th minutes right. with the spelling correction. Good. And I will second that. Great. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, we will vote. I guess I'll be vote taker too. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Nutter? Mm -hmm. I now have a second set of meetings from our special uh, meeting of August 2nd. Oh, I guess I've got those out of order. Oh, well. Uh, of August 2nd, to where we had it, uh, a meeting in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Is there a motion to approve seven minutes? Yes. Mr. Second. Moves. Mr. Hollister seconds. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Forgot to vote. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, I'll entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount $29,387.49. Uh, broken down. General fund $3,439. Fire fund $14,915.88. Cemetery $110,000. Uh, EMS billing 849141 and the capital project is zero. Is there a motion? I will make that motion. Mr. Crockett okay. moves. Is there a second? I will second that. Mr. Hollister seconds. I have include discussion regarding payment of those accounts. Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Crockett? Yes. yes. Thank you. Correspondence for the period. Uh, we have uh, some correspondence from MSA regarding draft minutes uh, of the meeting that we did have that the minute, meeting minutes were based off of a lot there. Uh, we have a copy of a letter that went out to uh, approximately 35 residents of Miami Township regarding the proposed uh, Yellow Springs Clifton connector, bike path, yet to be put together. I uh, have some correspondence back and forth between myself and a man from Dayton uh, Mailing uh, Inc. I N K Inc. About uh, I'm going to meet with him Wednesday morning about producing a postcard. I don't think that's good. This idea, but potentially producing producing a postcard to send to residents uh, about the burial search. Capabilities of the, of the of the website now. Um, you know, we were talking about running some ads in the Yellow Springs News, which is uh, certainly a, uh, an idea, also. But of course, that only has a certain amount of um, you know, limited coverage of the whole township. And um, I know when I was asking you about uh, when the Fire Fire Association sent out postcards for the letter. Uh, it, it seemed to be relatively reasonable uh, for for the amount of people that it covered. So yeah. I'm going to meet with a guy and talk about it and get an idea whether you know it's something we might want to consider doing. I wonder <coughs> the database covers Clifton and Clifton sir Clifton uh, graveyard cemetery also serves part of Clark County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if. The, Blanking on the township name. Green. Green Township. We might also be interested. Particularly, uh, I haven't had much conversation with David Farrell, but I'm told that he has a, a local history itch. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's... his family certainly from yeah. a few generations in the area. Well, that was going to be one of the things on my agenda to talk about with Jim, and so, you know, how targeted we could make these. Mm -hmm. uh, Make these mailings, so I was going to see if we could get into Clark County with any specificity. 
So we will see. They should be there. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's already here. So just saying, yeah. uh, it's not as targeted, but it might be dramatically cheaper uh, is to use the postal routes uh, instead of specific addresses. The problem is that some of them go outside the township and come back in. I'll ask them. Are you doing something like current resident or occupant? You just send a flyer to everybody? Mm -hmm. They yeah, wouldn't, need to be, wouldn't need to be people, it would be household. Right. And, and current and resident or occupant. Yeah, an actual address, yeah. And they do all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I consider everything that I receive as mail, <clears throat> but my wife doesn't. So things that are addressed to resident generally get thrown out. I'll, I'll make a note that we'll send that specifically to Mark Crockett, mm -hmm. not a resident. Right. For us, they actually, it was I think the same price, just to, they have to do the address searches anyway. Mm -hmm. So they just have color, whether the name type of that is, so the cards went to. So. Mm -hmm. so you put, they put multiple names on I mean, it would just say, you know, Tank Open Hour or like, okay. 3 Main Street. So whoever's basically yeah, there is calling would get it. Yeah. So if it was three or four different names, they'd put three or four different names on it. I think it's just because the one name or such and such household or the such and such family or something like that. Mm -hmm. He can type on it. So yeah. Know that, so. um, I have a set of uh, uh, additional minutes, got a lot of minutes from MSA. We're really, <laughs> although I think, hopefully we're not paying for these because this is still. Um, for a, from a conference call that was set up uh, last week, uh, we had some loose ends that needed to be tied up from our meeting, and, and I, I'll, I'll just get into that more in the fire department report part. So, another MSA, another connector draft, another connector draft. Uh, information about the annual meeting from Agraria and the summer celebration. I don't know if it's happened yet, but a lot of information that you guys can check out. I think it's um, next week. A statement from somebody. Um, stormwater Management Roundtable from MBRPC uh, coming up on uh, September 26th. Oh, that's John Howard, so that would be yours. Uh, resolution to proceed, we need to talk about that. Fire. Uh, house car. Uh, TAC. Uh, Agenda. I don't think you might have gotten all these, so those are probably duplicates. Um, so I went to the meeting. Something from Margaret. Um, a discussion about the solar farms that we've had that discussion with, with Richard last meeting. I think we received executive director's update. More Yale Springs Clifton connectors. Uh, more MSA business. Um, <coughs> I, I got the <coughs> contact from Shook Construction in Dayton, uh, who built the new uh, health department building in Xenia, and uh, the health commissioner was very complimentary of working with working with them, and he seemed to be he, he didn't know whether they bid or pulled up bid specs for our bid our bid in June, um, but he seemed to be interested in you know, potentially. So I told them I would keep it. Sure. So, uh, the they got another water plant. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. They're, they're a good company. Yeah. They've got a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good yeah. Uh, she said it was you know, on time and under budget. Uh, uh, newsletter from Bricker and Ecker, Ec Eckler, who we haven't had those for a while. We used to get those all the time. Um, notice about the executive committee meeting for our CC tomorrow afternoon. Uh, okay, an invitation that's already gone, grassland clipping, and um, well, wait, that invitation is next month. Oh, that's true. That's for the next month. Dutch Association man. I our our PVC our SVP for <laughs> the three of us. So if Thank you. if you don't want to go, let me know because seating is very limited. Uh, I'm not sure why they chose. I mean, I do know why they chose it, but it's for a commissioner's meeting, which is usually fairly well attended. 
and I mean they've got you know they've got reading room and conference room, but it's not going to hold mm -hmm. a bunch of people. So anyway, we did that. And the last one is uh, oh, Patty Bates sent me a, a notice about a a, a cemetery uh, grant uh, program that. The state of Ohio is is developing slash funding, and um, I'm familiar with it. it. It's very minimally funded, and it's really you know, meant for very small cemeteries uh, that are barely operational, really don't have any income at all, and to try and meet the, the state minimum of you know mowing once a year, mm -hmm. the state minimum is once a year. Mm -hmm. uh, that'd be nice if we only did that once a year, wouldn't it be, Daniel? No, if that's how many we did. <laughs> oh, it'd be great. Really. Yeah, I've only had to do it once. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other correspondence in or out this evening? Hearing none, we'll move along to the fire department report. All right, we have a, a memo somewhere. Mm -hmm. that. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, since the last meeting there have been 32 EMS calls, 12 fire calls, and eight fire safety inspections have been performed, mostly at Crestco. Um, are they ready to open? Or? <coughs> no, they're getting they're getting there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they made a lot of progress in the last week or two, so Sorry. yeah, I don't think I've been working two shifts. So. Mm -hmm. um, got resolution 2018-37 for y'all for y'all. Uh, to appoint some new volunteers. Okay. Uh, Georgia Goad and Joshua Poole uh, both applied and got through all our hoops and seemed like good candidates for the fire department. Local? Uh, yeah, of course not. Mm -hmm. uh, Georgia is an EMT already, so. Georgia male or female? Female. Mm -hmm. So, what's the total now? From all things. 38 total people, I think, on the department. So, wow. and so how many are volunteers? 28? 27 or 28. And it used to be? We were down to 16 at one point, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's... So, somebody's doing something right. I'm not sure what, but <laughs> <laughs> Any Any other students? You bet. Yeah. No. Is there a, did you do, do a plug during orientation? Uh, there is someone who is going to do a plug on our behalf. Shake the tree and see what's all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, so yeah, there's the resolution for you. Okay. Yeah. So, on, but you have to do it. So it's resolution 2018-37 appointment of volunteer personnel. Um, probably don't need to read the whole thing. Is as Chief says to appoint these two highly skilled and highly qualified and highly sought after candidates. Is there a <coughs> motion to approve resolution 2018-37? I so move. Mr. Collister, I move. Second. Mr. Crockett, second. Any further discussion regarding the resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please, Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. And I will vote yes. Mm -hmm. uh, official copy. Mm -hmm. I thought the president. Margaret for her, okay. Joan Hancock. It's um, more of an FYI. Uh, so the uh, state of Ohio released the 2017 Ohio Fire Code, which was effective in December, but wasn't available for purchase or download until May. So, uh, so we have got our copies. We downloaded our copies now, and uh, we'll begin uh, enforcing the current version on September 10th, which gives my staff have time to do their required fire code updates <laughs> in the marshal's office is put out. So there are some actual significant changes from the old version to the new one. So you guys will need to figure it out. And so we go out and start kicking in doors and taking names and all those kind of things. Any of those changes problematic from what you've seen so far? No, I mean there was a there was a lot of horror that came up over food truck regulation, which was new in the fire code. Um, the marshal's office released that and then received uh, an immediate complaint from the Ohio Association of Fair Boards. They existed, but um, 
because the regulations were pretty strict. Uh, Sorry. And pretty much, I mean, would have made 90% uh, of the food trucks you see on the, the road here illegal. Really? Um, so, Marshall Hussey, being a strong business advocate, okay. <laughs> being a smart guy, realized that uh, that's not going to work. <laughs> we got to do that. So, he's issued a statewide variance. They're altering the code to not make it retroactive. So new trucks will have to comply with these rules. Uh, but there are some spacing things that we're going to have to go over now. Uh, the chamber had a heart attack at first because you had to have 10 feet separating each truck. Yeah. Um, but the new variance drops it to three. So oh. that makes life a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. They prefer seven, but three is the minimum you can go. So. <laughs> Do you issue yards, ticks to all your inspectors? <laughs> Yeah, I guess we're going to have to go with a tape measure or some of that, so. And then there's a lot more just, there's a lot of stuff on the administrative side um, in terms of, they changed the whole violation process. And, uh, so Danny gave me to sit down and figure out how we're going to do that. So. It'll usually be very... Uh, Are you talking about reporting violations? No, uh, well, reporting a violation to a... Uh, Someone we've inspected, mm -hmm. you know, the, the code used to be pretty loose about that and how it was done. And, um, you could either write someone what's called a notice of violation, which is what we did all the time, saying, okay, you've got anywhere from 7 to 30 days to fix this. Mm -hmm. uh, or you could issue a citation, which was a big thing, which had to threaten a fine, and uh, you had to send a copy to the state fire marshal, all this kind of stuff. They can go to court and appeal it. And we've only done two of those, as long as I've been here as chief. Because uh, it's got to be a pretty serious violation. To warrant that, but the new code includes um, a new category called a serious hazard notice, um, and uh, that's also reported from the marshal's office. That encompasses a lot more of the stuff that we were writing up as just routine violations. So we've got to figure out how we're going to do that. There's a lot more teeth in the code now too. So, um, so that'll be interesting. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a flyer for the stair climb coming up on September 8th. So we've raised just over 77,000 bucks in four years. So we'll be doing some more this year. And this year's presenting sponsor is Green Memorial Wine mm -hmm. So we thank them for their support. Um, training stuff, uh, Nate recently completed a two-day machinery extrication course, which is extricating a person from the machine. Uh, <laughs> machine from the building or something. Industrial machines or farm equipment? Industrial, uh, primarily, in that one was focused on industrial. Um, and he said it was a great class. So it was hopefully worth the 200 bucks we dropped for that. Um, a volunteer at Dakota Cox has completed his EMT class and just has to take a certification test. So. Um, yeah, good for him. And then Casey Brewer, young Casey Brewer, uh, is just starting EMT class in Columbia Wiggins. Uh, we'll still be starting her class at Park State. Um, we are in the process of getting, finding more. Well, we need the and these guys. We're not doing it because we don't have the instructors or we don't have the students. Oh, no, we've got, we've got people. Uh, we just don't have the staff to teach the class. Mm -hmm. So right now with Amy's departure and mm -hmm. a couple of people who are teaching for us on contract, mm -hmm. they were doing everything. So mm -hmm. um, for some odd reason, I don't know why they wasn't really sure we were going to teach in the third class several times for 168 hours. Mm -hmm. I know, I told him. It's like, come on, you can get comp time. <laughs> really? Woo! <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, and then Alex will be starting paramedic class mm. for the fall. Yeah. For his, yeah. you know, requirement for his job. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and luckily he gets, uh, he gets to waive some of the requirements because he's already in advance. So. Mm. That made him happy. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, actually, budget-wise makes us happy because he basically skips the two uh, pre break courses. Let's see, who's in the paramedic class now in Clark's, no, Clark State? We've got no one in the paramedic right now. Mm -hmm. Somebody else starts in. I thought we just... Oh, you know, it, it said paramedic class, but oh. it's for EMT. It was Dakota's EMT. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Either that or you did something amazing. It was going to become paramedic in one fell swoop, but uh, I, I doubt that. No. <laughs> yeah, well, it goes with the normal. Clark State's billing is always some. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the interns are doing it or what. It's always uh, something crazy. So, 
Um, I'm out of town Thursday through Friday. Thursday. Thursday through Friday. Thursday through Monday, Thursday long weekend. Monday. For vacation, and then uh, Dan's out of town next weekend, the Labor Day weekend. And then last but not least, I put in staffing here. Um, since May 13th, when we shifted to this new 24 hour mm -hmm. staffing model, um, our non covered shifts, where there was either one EMT or no EMTs at all, have uh, decreased by 81%. Mm -hmm. You'll also see a uh, probably uh, parallel decrease in the amount of comp time that I've uh, <laughs> racked up, so I'm very happy. Uh, However, is there an 81% increase in payroll? Uh, <laughs> well, we, we, I mean, well, actually, it's what we anticipated, the payroll increases. Mm -hmm. um, by having Nate and now Alex or, or Joe here, finding that one more person hasn't been that much of a disaster. Um, we have had to fill some ships with some of the part-time guys, but I think we anticipate that mm -hmm. in budget models. So. Um, but not nearly as much as I thought, uh, which is good. And what's this Wednesday edition of Kev? Explain that to me. So um, the the pay system we're using to keep the three full time guys overtime down mm -hmm. is every seventh shift they don't work for Kev day. Um, we originally had that plan that it would just fall wherever it fell, mm -hmm. um, but that was going to turn out to be a, some to find someone to cover that shift was going to be a nightmare. All you know, relying on the time. So we changed the um, schedule to make it that they always have their Kelly day is on a Wednesday. So every Wednesday, whoever should be working that day is off. Mm -hmm. um, it's unpaid, so that's mm -hmm. how we save the money. Um, so we'd be kind of hit or miss trying to get someone to fill in during the shifts. Jason McIntosh was doing some, uh, but his work together was really kind of changed. And Ted was doing a lot of them. Um, and the original idea was to have a part-timer cover that whole 24-hour shift for the full-time guys. Mm -hmm. But we never found anyone who wanted to do it. And it wasn't a big deal because at night we had Alex and Jeremy were always volunteering. Now that Alex is in the full time slot, he's not volunteering anymore. So Jeremy's all by himself. So Ted has said that he can pick up the 24 every Wednesday, uh, which will be very nice. So, we always, so it's not just because a lot of times it's ending up just being day out here during the day, you know, on Wednesday. Um, and we had a big hole from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. What we what would it say? But uh, by he, now he's working thirty six hours. Thirty six hours for what? Um, he'll have so he's got the one regular twenty four hour shift mm -hmm. now, and then he'll have one twelve hour shift additional to that that he's doing every <coughs> every six days that he Brett and Evan do, um, and now Ryan Evans also. So thirty six hours a week. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically it's going to work out to about 72 hours a day period, like we had with Joe and Jason before they were. So is he now full-time? Uh, he would meet that class, the same weird classification we had with Joe and Jason. So he'd get sick time, vacation time after a year. And we could offer him uh, the other health benefits, which would be offset. We don't think Alex is going to take health benefits because I think he gets a better deal where he is, what he's on right now. some unspoken words here. Uh, yeah, I'd just be interested to see how that you know, financially affects us. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you decide to choose and come on board, I don't know, is it a full family plan? He would be? I don't know. I've got, I mean, we've got a, he and I need to sit down and discuss mm -hmm. it. I mean, he's not on it now, so we obviously talk to you guys about that. Yeah, um, and see what what he's thinking, what he wants to do, all those kind of things. Yeah, um, we need to shift cover, unfortunately. Uh, all right. Well, prior to committing, you know, let me know what. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, might be. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I need to talk to Steve and get an estimate. Well, I mean, actually, I can talk about it. So if I'm following the train of thought here, we're in effect going to have another full-time person that hadn't been in the original plan. Correct. I mean, the original plan included a 24-hour 
person does part time, but um, I mean, we can have him come off the other shift, and I gotta find someone to work that shift. And that's permitted the problem. We don't, you know, there's not a whole lot of part timers out there. And we waited, took us forever to get Ryan on, um, just because trying to find someone who wants to come and work for what we pay is, is tough when they're up against the Washington Township who's paying them, you know, they sign up for $4 an hour and what we pay, or Riverside who pays two fifty dollars and what we pay. You know, so it's always been a hook for those kind of people that they can, you know, you may not be getting that much money, but we can give you benefits if you qualify them at that hour. So. But I mean, I'll, I've got to sit with Margaret and figure all the, the cost mm -hmm. stuff out first. So. The next board meeting. Okay. What else you got? That is all. Anything else for Chief? Fire departments in general? <laughs> okay, so let's zip right along to uh, new firehouse discussion. Um, I don't know if anybody else has got anything, but let me just briefly go through what I have and then we can discuss anything else. Um, may or may not recall, but periodically this past year, uh, we had phone conversation, uh, phone conference calls uh, um, every month, six weeks or so, uh, except for this period of after the bids because nothing was really going on at that time. But the, uh, the calls are between uh, USDA, MSA, us, slash me, I think that's it. Anyway, so we had another one this past week, and it was, as you recall, when we left the meeting, when we last met in, in Cincinnati at MSA, there, there were some loose ends to the discussion, mainly financial loose ends, you know, how much this was going to cost, how much was the soil remediation, don't bring that up again, please. Um, <laughs> the problem with the cladding, as you recall. Don't, uh, anyway. So they had to put some of these numbers together and get more accurate uh, uh, estimates of soil being moved and that sort of thing. So that's what this call was about. Uh, the numbers have been put together. We had received. It was printed and available for everyone to see. I hope you all looked at it. But the numbers, the revised estimate for uh, for the building based on these new numbers. Okay, so as you recall, we were going to save $283,000 for soil remediation on a $78,000 estimate for a soil remediation or a $700,000 estimate for a soil remediation. Uh, so we weren't exactly sure of that number. All right, well, to make a long story short, that number got was revised and the quote, new hard number is approximately $200,000. 150000 to take the soil out and 50000 to go buy new soil and bring it in. That's worst case scenario that if the soil is taken out is not of a good enough quality to put back and compact. They could reuse. They could reuse it. it. Yeah, they could reuse every, every bit of it if it's a good enough quality. They have to take under what's called the hardscape. That includes the building and anything that's got asphalt on it or cement. They have to they have to lower that by two feet. Has to strip two feet of soil out, and then they have to put three feet of soil back. Compacted. Oh yeah, all compacted and everything. Three feet to get the building above grade, so then they can drain it away. Uh, for some reason, that this is brand spanking new. We never knew we had to do this to this building. And so that's an additional $50,000, you know, potentially for the soil, for the drainage, if necessary. So anyway, that number gets thrown in there. And then there were all the changes about, you know, the 15 or 20 items that we either deleted or modified, you know, reduced this, that, and the other thing. Again, those all were, were sent over. And then there were some, then there were just a couple of 
differences, and that was in uh, what we decided to do with the, uh, how to put the bid together with the alternates. And the one alternate, if you recall from the meeting, was to uh, remove the, that lower strip of cement fascia from the building and just have the, the, the siding come all the way come all the way down. This was supposed to help get a, a different amount of contractors that would bid it instead of building it at eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars to bid it at the actual hundred and fifty thousand which is which was supposed to be. But we were still talking about two colors. No, just one. No, just one. Um, but the alternate was to bid it at the original two color uh, system. I thought we were talking about doing the same type of siding, but mm -hmm. with a, a color, color variation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, well, I'm sorry I missed that. Yeah, they were just going to and make it wider at the mm -hmm. bottom to make it that look, because Nestor had talked about it look the same from the distance. Yeah. So, so this was going to be deleted, and then the this wall material is going to come down all all the way, and not not use this. Right, but but the wall material could be a, a different color at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. So it looked like mm -hmm. it would still look like that stone. Still have the same. Okay. Well, but from a distance. Well, well, I mean, I, even the stain was at the bottom. Of it. I'm sorry. What's at the bottom? Stainless. No, it's going to be. Um, it's going to be a basically like cement board, for like we're turned down, and then the bottom was going to be like a another clipped-on stone-based product. So what they proposed is just doing basically the cement board all the way down, and then just using a different color along the bottom to make it look like that, mm -hmm. which was cheaper because there was only one kind of right. one product to fasten, because it's on a like a rain shut. Uh, yeah. Rain screen system. Well, my understanding of, of it was that by doing it that way, by keeping it all the same material, that you used all the same type of system right. for attaching it. Yes. Unfortunately, if you look closely at the numbers, you'll notice that the new bit spec is exactly the same cost mm -hmm. as the original bid spec. Uh, the original stone fascia was fifty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. The new revised price with extending the that is forty nine thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. Oh that's saving there. Between that and the baby changing station we should be fine. But, but the idea is in theory it will bring in different contractors to bid it, who will bid it at the price. The competitive it's price rather than yeah. 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 a special right. product price. Still, I'm not sure why you know, this is the most unique thing known to man. Okay, so all of those things. Oh, and the, the light monitors on the roof over the lobby and over the, um, over the apparatus bay, those are going to stay in the bid but they're also going to have an alternate to delete them. So if it comes up, it's too much, instead of having to rebid it, you know, revise it and rebid it and everything, we'll have an alternate that the contractor will say, okay, we're going to delete this one and it would be, save you $20,000 for the lobby one and, I forget what's it, $40,000 for the apparatus bay one, something like that. So anyway, that's, that's a different, that's a difference from what we talked about in, in Cincinnati. I think that's about it. Yeah. Okay, so all of those numbers, all all crunched, came out at yeah four million nine hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars. But the problem is that number is ninety-three thousand dollars short of being able to maintain a minimum three percent contingency that USDA requires that we go into a bid with to have three percent setback as a contingency. You know, I'm not, you know, I don't have all these numbers memorized, but I know it was like 93,000 short. So, what that has.
pretty much forced, it into, forced us into doing is to take this option of, of borrowing additional money from the USDA uh, to cover the contingency, which realistically ought to be 5%, not 3%, because 3% just nobody does it at 3%, but that's their minimum. But to have it at 5% and then have it to where if we had to, um, if the bids came in and it was, it was over the 4952 because of the light monitors, then we could go into this pot of money, as it were, uh, to fund the light monitors for construction and or anything else that happens. Conversely, if it comes in on the bid amount, if it actually got built or proposed or potentially got built out at the right amount, we wouldn't need to go with this option. We wouldn't actually, he says, you know, we wouldn't need this money. If we needed this money, we wouldn't necessarily need it till the end of the project after it's mostly built and, you know, almost all the bills have come in and we still have bills coming in and we didn't have the money for it, you know, then we could, then we could go for it. We're still going to have to pretty much officially do this to have it in place because USD yes. won't let this, won't let this be rebid unless we've got this contingency money. And if you don't commit to borrowing it, you know you're not, you know, you're not guaranteed to have it on hand if you actually need it. So what we have is resolution 2018-39. Now, as you all recall, we've already committed to asking our bond council in Cincinnati, Dinsmore, to prepare a general obligation security bond for us. And they're just waiting for us to say, okay. And that was the 350,000? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the general secu security bond. This is to allow USDA to purchase that bond, or not allow them, for us to make application to go into their system for the $350,000 to purchase that bond, and then they would be holding that bond the same way they're holding the bond that, for the 57 out there now. So anyways, we now have resolution 2018-39, which is a resolution to proceed. It's authorizing application to USDA uh, to fund the purchase of a general obligation security bond. So it reads, whereas, and I'm reading this for the record and for uh, minutes availability. Whereas Board of Trustees of Miami Township, Green County, Ohio, determined that it's necessary to pay an additional capital expense related to the construction for a new township firehouse, and whereas all aforementioned expenses are associated with plans, specs, drawings, and bids for the new firehouse, and whereas in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 51101, all the funds generated by the issuance of a general obligation security bond for this are for the sole purpose of constructing a new township firehouse as specified in big documents prepared by MSA architects under contract to the Board of Trustees of Miami Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Miami Township, Green County, Ohio, wishes to make application to USDA for funding of the, of the required general obligation security bond in the amount not to exceed $350,000. Not to exceed, remember, we could do it for less. Be it further resolved that the purpose of the bond for construction of a new firehouse, fire rescue facility for the residents of Miami Township is for a period of 30 years. Uh, is there a motion for that resolution? I so move. Is there a second? second that. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I have been very reticent about going down this road. I really don't want to obligate the general fund this amount of money. The main reason is because I have been, in my mind, I've had this $350,000 which we spent at like some 300 well, in total, three hundred fifty thousand dollars that we spent for the property, we used every penny of our rainy day fund mm -hmm. to to do that. The reason that we have been holding on to this rainy day fund is because back in the early Kasich administration, he was cutting you know he was cutting local revenue funds. Our our expenses uh, were not matching what we were getting. We were, you know, going in the red every year, twenty-five to forty thousand uh, uh, dollars in our budget. Since then, we made substantial amount of adjustments. Mm -hmm. Correct, Mark, to our 
expenses, expenditure basically, but our revenues, our revenues have gone up a little bit. It's just over time, the state of Ohio, that sort of thing, the local government fund went up just a few ticks, but the, but the general revenue from Texas has gone up. All the departments have seen a little bit more. Um, we've kept our expenses down, certainly in the general fund, and more importantly in the road and bridge fund. Because prior to this case of cost cutting measures, we were funding out of the general fund basically road and bridge. Because road and bridge was using because of basically because of a payroll. We had two full time, both fully funded, um, relatively high salary with full benefits, all, all of those sorts of things. And so the, the general fund was funding uh, a, a certain portion, sometimes a large portion, of the road maintenance that was done on a year-to-year -year basis. So we made all these changes. <coughs> uh, Dan won't spend a dime unless I force him to. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't get any ideas on oh, there. No. <laughs> uh, uh, and we have built up a, uh, a fairly substantial, and we've held back on some of the maintenance that we could do and will do next year, but we built up a fairly substantial uh, uh, budget surplus in particularly the gas gasoline tax. Uh, Road and Bridge is, is sustaining itself. We don't have to make that contribution. Uh, we're, we're, we're fixing roads over the past few years out of total road and bridge and or um, gas tax uh, monies. And so, long story short, I don't feel, number one, I don't feel the pressure to hold on to this pot of money, this $350,000, if we need to spend a little bit of it. You know, I'm not saying we spend the whole thing, you know, it comes down to it, we'll just pay off the, the bond when we Obviously, we've got to wait to sell the building. Hopefully, you know, we expect to get 350 for it. It'd be nice if we got more. But anyway, that's kind of the, the plan that we uh, get that money and, and then, you know, we pay off. Uh, we either hold on to it for our rainy day fund or potentially pay off the bond or a portion of it. Sorry, I'm being long winded. I just don't feel that we're, you know, that hard up for money that, you know, we. Can't let go a little of that out of that rainy day fund. Additionally, I'm still very hopeful that the next administration of the state of Ohio will uh, reconsider the local government funding that has been passed. Oh, at that, that uh, was it? <coughs> regional planning organization association of regional planning organization mm -hmm. interviews with the candidates. They both made big. Commitments. <laughs> yes, pay commitments. I, I know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, hope springs eternal. And certainly the economy is uh, roaring right along and it's generating, you know, a, a lot of uh, jobs in construction. And construction like Cresco, we're going to see a substantial bump in our property taxes as a result of, of Cresco, um, you know, once they get going and once they start paying the, you know, the property tax on the full appraised value of the building. Um, Calculated it. I don't remember what it is right this second. Uh, I just can't remember the number. But anyway, it's you know it's a substantial amount for a for a little operation like us. Uh, yeah, they didn't think of the big number. No, uh, no. no. I, mean, I think the schools are getting something towards a hundred thousand. Uh, we got it. <clears throat> so anyway, um, that's my discussion regarding this resolution. Uh, it, as much as I didn't want to do it in the past, I. Kind of talk myself into it. it's not <laughs> going to be quite as bad. I think. Well, it sounds like something that we have to do anyway. Uh, I whether, think we do, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Uh, well, I appreciate getting some of this. You already said in other conversations, but I appreciate the the background budget background. Mm -hmm. So, if there's no further discussion, let us vote, Mr. Mutcher. Oh. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Rocky? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay, that takes care of that.
Um, that's pretty much all I have for a new firehouse discussion. If there's nothing else, we'll move to the uh, cemetery portion of the program. So Section Bill Canar? Yes, sir. Well, we haven't had any burials since the last meeting. I still have two ashes pending. I think one might be this week, I'm not sure. She's going to call that. It'll be soon. But I can't make it. Right. Exactly. So that's what's going on, and we're going to be the cemetery next week because it looks pretty tacky. Um, <laughs> since you brought that up, <laughs> I now feel emboldened to mention that I realized Don, I'm sorry this is your cemetery at Clifton. Go ahead. It just I've never seen it look so bad. Yeah. It just, just, we weedy and, and you know I don't know weeks later more, it's boom. It just we didn't get any contribution from the other half this year or last year. So that's kind of big You mean to to spray it or yeah, green has Jeff been. never came back yeah. and did that? Yeah not done it all this year. When I drove through two weeks ago, the only impression I had was the grass right by the well. That's the monument. Yeah, right around the seven. Yeah, that's yeah, what it's, you know, it's like this. And but I, I've just never seen so high. I know. I know. I, I can't answer your question. But I know it's bad. It looks bad. I talked to the gentleman the other day. They came down. And they want to buy a couple, and his wife said no. I don't like this. When I talked to him, he tried to explain to her, we probably only do this so many times a year. And I said, yeah. He was understanding about it, she, she wasn't. So he was going to talk to her. I said, well, we're going to take care of that next week. Well, we might have to consult with Mr. Hollister and, and Mr. Clem and somebody else. Who, who else is the third person now? Is it still Lita? Yes. Is she still on? Okay. Yes. Um, and get you guys to. Authorized the end of hire some part time somebody you know if it, if it looks you know if it's, if it's more than six inches or something I'm telling you it, it's, it's like yeah it's, it's like this high yeah it's well right. it wasn't quite that high well it was two weeks ago yesterday it was I believe that I believe that I um I like you're saying third mowing but we we don't want to set up to do that but we do usually three times try to do four Mother's Day and the more day and four July and Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Times, you know, like right now, it's just, it's just what were you referring to when you said that we haven't had help this year or last year? Well, usually Green Township sprays, they come in and spray. And they that is, they do herbicide around mm -hmm. the perimeter so, of the monuments. Because mm -hmm. they have a guy who's certified to do right. that. Right, and that's their contribution, they, what they contribute to the terrorist force work. So, what we've been yes. doing is weed whacking three, four times a year. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Weed whacking. Mm -hmm. Not an easy job. Mm -hmm. And it helped when it sprayed. The only problem with that is in the fall you get the crabgrass, and in the fall we get it usually really bad because of the crabgrass. And once again, we have crabgrass. Mm -hmm. And it's just Looks like the moment you can hardly keep up with the moment. Grass is so they have one uh, hour. And the animals slowed down. So you have crabgrass as a result of the sprays and it, it stays in like bare dirt for you can get crabgrass. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't if he doesn't come back with a, a kind of more residual free or something to keep it from coming up, mm -hmm. it hasn't been. We do our best, but sometimes it looks like it. It doesn't matter. Conversation with Brian about committing. Mm -hmm. So, Clint. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else you got out there from the uh, I should have an estimate or um, sidewalk if you're I found someone else. 
these guys or somebody else? Uh, somebody local. You know, even better. So it's going to work me at a little price. Well, these guys never got right back with me. I called him twice. And he's never called me back. So I'll get right back with you. And local who's in the business? They do. I didn't know they done it. They did. Oh, okay. So, that's so yeah. Spencer. You know, Spencer. Oh, yeah. They know they've done concrete. Johnny. Johnny. I'm missing what, what are we talking about now? Our approach up here at the cemetery is oh. all the sidewalk approaches. Yeah, it's crumbling. And then I asked Johnny, he gave me his name. I didn't really know. Mm -hmm. So he did. Okay. And I think he will. Nobody else has. <laughs> <laughs> really? And yeah, no, I know. I'm, I'm, I didn't have that. And when I talked to uh, CNS, he thought, yeah, I'll give you a bid, but he's got so much going on and it's a smaller spot. Right. And I understood that. Yeah, get him, and then get him to do it. It's too, too Yeah, and he said, he's so busy, he said, I'd have to send somebody to either do it, but no, it's just fine. That's the way it is. We have a new fence now. Oh, is it up? Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know this, but I'm going to look at it. Yeah, just this afternoon. It looks nice. Good. It matches well. Good. Um, I mean, it's shiny and black, yeah. but unfortunately, it doesn't match anything else like that. But uh, at least the hole's gone. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> And they, uh, I don't know, remember, it, it didn't square off. Uh, it was some oblong or something, yeah. you know, yeah. because, I don't know, because of the way the road was cut or who knows what. But So they put a short piece to bring the corner out to square off. With oh, yeah, because it tapered. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's cool. Yeah, so it looks good. Well, look at it. Okay. The only other thing I had was, drum roll please, I finally completed putting Julie Overton's book in the, in the cemetery soft. Oh wow. All yeah. the bazillion. That's a lot. That yeah, was a lot. 2200, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Wow. For Clifton, it was yeah. 2200. No, um, Clifton was 1200. I forget what one course was. Mm. The only one at the Catholic cemetery is now. The Catholic cemetery is here, is here but it's not in the soft. Okay, anything else for the... Uh, now, when did Julie pass me? A million years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's been a while. If it's Clifton Century Expenses, I don't know if it was. <laughs> All right, Mr. Roadman. Uh, well, I got my porch from the door, so we'll see tomorrow what happens. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it won't leak. So we'll work on that tomorrow. I got the generator running back all the service and we're working again today. So. What are those big chrome pins you've got out there? What are those for? Big chrome pins. Big chrome pins, thick round chrome pins with a nut on the end? Oh, it's a bush hole. Is that what it is? Yeah, the last one I got, I got my roll came in the thread and parts not really long enough, so I run the nut on and when I tap it, it cracked. No. So. The pin crack, not my well. Yeah. So I'll replace it. Mm -hmm. It's not that bad job. Do one at a time. Why do you have that old mower fan that you were making I just said back there. I just have it. But the new one is in the box. No, nah, that's another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make, I'll make it disappear. That's about all I had. As soon as I get the roads trimmed, I'll get back to mowing ditches again. Yeah, pretty tall. They're spotty. Some don't look bad, but some are like that. Yeah, uh, your, your ditches don't look bad. Um, so I went out and looked at roads yesterday just for fun. Um, just these are these are random thoughts. Maybe keep in mind. I think next year we, we might consider chips in all the SNP road. A SNP was one of my roads. Um, Maybe we can get Bath Township to overlay those bad spots on Houston. The, the, the one that's right there, you see the two together. Zine is going to bring their hot box up. That two time. We're just going to do it by hand. Okay. okay. It'd be quicker. Mm -hmm. um, instead of Bath setting up with their machine and everything. Yeah. yeah Jim's agreed. And sometimes give me a couple of times, bring them up, and we'll just do it by hand. It wouldn't take anything. Yeah. Okay, well, that'd be good. Now on, on SNP, I think there's one spot maybe in, in the wooded area that uh -huh. might need to be pulled something over. I 
Tehát yeah. eltrótam. Mm-hmm. Majd jobb rakja a kikutó. Na, tartsz, hogy nem tudsz volna rögtön. De igen, szóval volt, hogy nem tudsz volna rögtön. Igen, 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 nem Speaking of bumps, at some point we're going to work on the Sugar Creek Township, right? The bump yes, driving. we are. Okay. Because um, that, that should be chipped next year. Yeah. And there's a little bit of wedging there. I was looking at when I was down there and I seen, I could wedge get rid of some of that rough stuff. Maybe, yeah. maybe something to think about. So I need to tell this resident that we're going to, uh, we're trying to grind those bumps on Jacoby. Um, yeah, this year. Yeah, and keep at the potholes. There are potholes. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I want to stretch right in there. If we could pull something over that, that would eliminate some of that every year after year. Oh, you were talking about Brandon then. You were talking about Chicago. I'm talking about Chicago. Uh-huh. But Brandon would be nice to take the, the bones out too. It's the same road, actually. Yeah. It's like 68. Right. Yeah. So if you want, I can, you know, I thought about Brandon, but we hadn't talked about it. Well, I thought we would have talked about it. That's what I said. Well, I'd like to take yeah. them out too. Okay. Um, so I'm going to tell her it's not going to be till next year, though, because we well, couldn't we get ship it. it and everything. I mean, if like I we couldn't get it, we couldn't get it on this year's collection. No. So this, I'm just this is what I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we could grind it yet this year. We'd yeah. urge take and grind them off. Yeah. It's just taking the bumps off the road. The road's still going to be there. All right. Well, at least, uh, give us something to be hopeful about. Yes. <laughs> Bump and grind. <laughs> Oh no, a pothole and grind. Um, I, I think we should uh, strike high road next year, don't you? Are they wearing, is it wearing out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe Chet Seal Larkins? That's a, that's a good job. Great minds have a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bryce Harbison, Kyle, they're all good. North is good. Uh, Cooklin Cemetery is bad. Okay, that's good. That's all I have. Mm-hmm. What else got anything? Oh, no. Uh, I got a lot of vacation time. There's no way I could squeeze a Friday off there. What? Yeah. Fridays off. I know. I know. Mm-hmm. I mean, as long as I'm not depressing. You know, okay. As long anything. as you can, you know, as long as you nearly count. I'm just up. trying to look at you. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to use a couple of weeks here in October, November. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hawaii. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. I'm gonna go volcano. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna go to the top of the volcano at four o'clock in the morning and watch the sunrise. You know, I'm gonna ride a bike there for so mm-hmm. 38 miles. So I'm like, well, I'm through the lava. Hopefully not so quick ride. <laughs> it's not like a fun excursion. That's not really bad. It's all that real life. How we can ride that thing? Yeah. Got a motor. Getting back to business. Mm-hmm. Is that it for your own? Okay. Thank you for taking over, Tim Murray. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, uh, this officer is not with us this evening. We are wishing her the best of quick recovery. Um, zoning is not this time. But Mark and I were having a brief conversation about. Uh, Excuse me. Yes, sir. Do we want to vote on this oh, change in absolutely. permanent appropriations? Absolutely. Thank you. Three hundred and thirty dollars. We have uh, resolution two thousand eighteen thirty seven, an amendment of permanent appropriations, wherefore ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amendments, capital fund forty nine oh one. Um, Going to increase contingencies by three hundred and thirty dollars. I move sure. adoption of this resolution. Mr. Hollister has moved. Mr. Crockett has seconded. Any uh, further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please, Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Mutri? Yes. Done. Okay. Thank you. So um, <coughs> there was a little discussion earlier about uh, what the recommendation was that, that hasn't back up. 
the recommendation, the zoning commission, as we all know, put in a recommendation to make some zoning changes that we haven't seen yet, but the process being they had to make the recommendation forwarded to the uh, regional planning uh, uh, commission for their review and their recommendation as to what to do to for the zoning commission. The zoning commission will then make their recommendation to us for our uh, eventual uh, decision what to do. And that recommendation, their original idea was to remove uh, three separate portions of the code, uh, R1, um, R2, and PUD. Uh, the recommendation from the uh, regional planning, um, if anybody, if it was there, but if anybody didn't see it, I just wanted to go through it real quickly. Uh, I didn't see it on the table, and I tried looking up on their website. It's not there yet. I'm not sure how quickly they're they're putting stuff up. Anyway, their recommendation is number one, does not recommend eliminating section 13 plan unit development because of the following reasons. PUDs provide a flexible option for communities and developers. PUDs enable the use of uh, cluster cons conservation designs in rural areas and mixed use when appropriate. Uh, the area is fully developed, that's a little field, with restrictions preventing further division of land and containing a conservation easement of, of over 16 uh, acres. Future PUD requests will be determined by the township on a case-by-case -case basis. The second recommendation is to approve the elimination of Section uh, 8R2 and Section 9R3 multi-family uh, districts. So that was, that was the formal recommendation to the Zoning Commission. Now, I don't know whether they've had their public hearing uh, for my, these. My understanding is they had a public hearing last month. Meet again, tomorrow. or maybe it's. T they had, they've had their public hearing uh, before, whenever regional planning met, mm -hmm. and then they're uh, receiving regional planning uh, report tomorrow night. I see. Okay. Well, <coughs> anyway, uh, and then they'll, we talked about that. I just one. Mm -hmm. Then they'll send us. Reports uh, for a period. Let's see. NBRPC did meet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did meet uh, last month. Uh, uh, had some interesting. Had some interesting presentations. Oh, wait a second. Interesting presentations by a couple of groups. Uh, one from in. Internal, internally, uh, presentation from Matt Lindsay about um, about enactment of the Fast Act. So this is a na national act. It's for um, creating a network of alternative fueling and charging uh, infrastructure along the, the interstate system in the United States. As far as Ohio is concerned, um, they're hoping for a Dayton, Cincinnati, Columbus for compressed natural gas and uh, electric vehicles. <coughs> Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana added uh, all of Interstate 275 in Indiana, Kentucky, and ODOT added all of Interstate, Interstate 71 to that. And so what that's going to do is that's going to uh, eventually, hopefully, establish both fuel refilling stations at reasonable intervals to allow fleets to, to uh, convert over to uh, natural gas or, uh, or electric um, and be able to you know, efficiently travel on the interstate highway. Uh, this is very early in the, uh, in the program. There is no, uh, there is no s uh, network in the state of Ohio, at least for uh, any amount of uh, complete charging locations. Uh, there are there are a lot of smaller charging stations like we have down at the uh, yeah. down at the village. There are there's a fair amount of charging stations for Teslas alone. They've got a network around the country. 
Unfortunately, Teslas are proprietary and you cannot charge it in another vehicle at a Tesla charging station. What um, about the natural gas? Clean burning natural gas. Mm -hmm. uh, Teslas don't use that. So, um, um, <laughs> there are there are more of those available than there are the, the, the high power charging stations, but there's not a system uh, yet that's, that, that, that would fully allow these interstates, uh, you know, a truck or a car. I mean, not many cars are using the, the, the natural, the, uh, the uh, compressed natural gas, um, but the, the trucks that use them uh, can't yet completely traverse the yeah. state of Ohio uh, mm -hmm. all over to be able to mm -hmm. do that. Um, then there's a secondary system that they're trying to put in place of charging, which is a real high power charging. It uses, most ch most car charging areas use a, like a, either a 50 or 100 amp charging stations, takes you know, four to 10 hours, something like that. Well, these new charging stations use 400 amp chargers but 400 amps is awful hard to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to just, you just don't get a plug and plug in 400 amps. Mm -hmm. So anyway, there's very few of these, but that's the ones they want to do because you can get almost 80% charge in your batteries in like a half an hour. I mean, it's very fast. Wow. Um, but those things are smoking by the time mm -hmm. they get done. They could be hard on the batteries. If yeah. They design batteries to handle them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they are. Anyway, so that was an interesting program. And then uh, uh, AARP sent a representative up to, to talk to us about their livable community indexes, which is um, fairly, you know, fairly self-explanatory that, you know, communities are livable for older people if they have, you know, affordable housing, you know, access to neighborhood events, good safe transportation, public transportation, um, Clean environment, you know, uh, health, those sorts of things. Pretty straightforward, but but she was uh, she gave a, a very nice presentation on it. Did we say that? They have a weekly um, news, you know, internet newsletter for uh, senior mobility from AARP, which I find fascinating. Oh yeah. Oh, I want to make a copy of that. Okay. Um, NPRP's website has that whole presentation, the whole complete presentation on it. If you're interested, you can go to that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, my other one was, uh, well, regional planning. We just basically touched on that. That was probably enough of that. So, and the mill seems to be doing fine. So that's, I mean, Mark, anything going on with you? And um, there was no meeting on the economic sustainability uh, board last month, mm -hmm. and it will be this month. They will? Okay. Um, well, next month. Yeah. But um, as far as the senior center went, um, I've been trying to contact uh, Suzanne Patterson, see when the uh, next board meeting is mm -hmm. for that group. And, uh, we did play for the uh, senior jam fest. Oh yeah, that's right. You did. How'd that go? Uh, one fun. Did it? Yeah. Good. Well attended there. Uh, it looked like it. Yeah. Good. I hope that they made a lot of money. Uh, they did. Because they spent it there now. <coughs> that helps. So you said you went to the TAC meeting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I also went to. That orientation. orientation. So mm -hmm. in an at NBRPC twice this month. Mm -hmm. uh, TAC, as you may recall, is all numbers and revisions from previous plans, and uh, there's there's nothing fresh to report. Uh, there is another, however, uh, not formally as a township trustee. I've been uh, going to uh, programs that uh, your MVRPC sustainability guy, what's his name? 
anyway, I'm on, I'm on a monthly uh, ad hoc group with him mm -hmm. uh, around surface water issues. Uh, and parallel to that, you gave me a mailing I was received on uh, stormwater mm -hmm. management roundtable. And I can imagine, I, I, this is just a general concern, that in coming years, just as, as we've noticed, drainage in the village has gotten worse with heavier rains, mm -hmm. uh, that may become more and more of an issue in the township. So I'm well, we trying to learn about it. Mm -hmm. And I know that was something that was one of Lamar's specialties. Learn more about ditches and uh, drainage systems. Full report on the ditches. <laughs> ditches are done. <laughs> uh, anything else? Nope. Uh, any new business this evening? Any old business? I have two little items. I just want to let you know that I did attend the health department open house for the new department. Um, they did not give me a pair of scissors, it's the same way we got one when we cut Dick Eastman's um, covered bridge. There's some nice scissors for Dick Eastman's head. But they mm -hmm. took the scissors back, unfortunately. <laughs> but, um, had a uh, interesting ride along last Thursday on Green Cats. I've never been on a Green Cats bus. I've never, never been on a Green Cats route. I've never been on a Green Cats with with the director of Green Cats Mobility uh, telling us everything we ever want to know about Green Cats Mobility. And somebody stole my Cresco football. <laughs> Who was that? From the bus? No, from the other room. Oh, oh I'm playing both football. Oh, I saw you. No, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Oh, that's all right. I've got a Cresco Frisbee. <laughs> I trade, but well, I don't have the way. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we went uh, we went on their route. We went from here to Fairborn, and we went Fairborn back, and then we went from here to Xenia, and Xenia back, and we saw all the sites and stopped on the stops and talked yeah. to all the people on the What's bus. What's the connection between Cresco and the bus ride? Because Karen Winchho, God bless her soul, <laughs> showed up and had these little goodie bags for everybody who went on the ride. And apparently Cresco was the major sponsor. Oh, okay. Kind of like Sony is a stair climb. Cresco. Cresco will be our bag sponsor. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay. <coughs> so that was that was quite that was quite interesting. <laughs> um, Brian House uh, from the village went with us, Karen Wintro and Kevin uh, um, Kevin still felt so. Anyway, every, every time. So, any other business this evening? If not, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Can you push that button? I can. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. Right. Thank you. Channel of New Yorker lawyer on public transit, like spray paint, tag the bus there. <laughs> <laughs> the bus is in good shape. I know, dude. They're